In 2008, Congress passed one of the Beltway's masterpieces of big bipartisan legislation, the so-called Farm Bill, which sets the table for everything under the purview of the Department of Agriculture. Farm bills last for five years, but yesterday, as representatives cast their votes on the latest iteration of the Farm Bill, it all went horribly wrong. Members of both parties balked at the legislation and down it went, leaving harsh recriminations and some uncomfortable questions in its wake. So joining us now to help us get a handle on all the drama from Washington, D.C., Justin Green. He's the online editor for the Washington Examiner. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Kelly L. Derricks, president and co-founder of the Children of Vietnam Veterans Health Alliance. From Clarks, Nebraska, Rick Hammond, who's a farmer and a rancher. And also from Washington, D.C., joining via Skype, we have Lorette Picciano, executive director of the Rural Coalition. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so we have a failed farm bill. Um, we've got it up on the politics vertical here. Farm bill falls, fails in house. Um, it's got people up in arms, understandably so. This is a big, important piece of legislation. Uh, Justin, one of the sources of controversy in uh, the bill is the food stamp element. Um, it's got Republicans up in arms. Um, just fill us in for those who don't know. Are food stamps always part of the farm bill, or is this something that was kind of brought in at the last minute? Uh, SNAP is historically about 80% of the farm bill. Um, and it, the politics of it got very nasty in the last few days because Republicans added uh, several amendments, which was, it was, I was rather surprised that Banner allowed to go through. The first was one that required recipients of SNAP to uh, take a drug test, which A, on the state level, has been found to be a waste of money, and B, was something that in turn caused a lot of Democrats to become no votes in the bill. So it, uh, it, I think it was universally pretty surprising because this is one of those bills where you always have the incentive for both parties to say, okay, sure, Republicans want their farm subsidies, Democrats could not possibly vote against food stamps. So this was rather surprising. All right. Now, meanwhile, congressional Democrats are lashing out over the failure of the bill. So let's start out and take a look at what Nancy Pelosi had to say. Here, watch. What is happening on the floor today was a demonstration of major amateur hour. They didn't get results and they put the blame on somebody else. Kelly, is this really uh, amateur hour at the Apollo for Congress? You know, I'm, I'm not gonna stick to any line that Nancy Pelosi is gonna throw out there. What I am gonna say is that I felt it was sloppy legislation and it has been. If you are going to introduce legislation called quote unquote, the farm bill, then make it about agriculture. Let's not make it about taking benefits away from those who need them. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, let's also take a look at uh, Steny Hoyer here. He responded. It's on video. This is about as agitated as I've seen him. Take a look. The majority leader continues to want to blame the Democrats for his inability and the Republicans' inability to give a majority vote to their own bill. Maybe the American people he thinks can be fooled. You're in charge of the House. You have 234 members. 62 of your members voted against your bill. That's why it failed. Okay, so, uh, Lorette, you know, this is some uh, good opportunity for grandstanding. That's what politics is all about in a way. But do you think that either party can really profit from this? Um, hasn't all of Congress got some responsibility to blame? And are they going to sink or swim together? Wow, it's just amazing to try and figure out what's going to happen right now. This is the third iteration of the same bill, and everyone is getting progressively worse. You know, part of it, a big part, is about the SNAP things, um, but there were also some real poison pills as well. There was like a complete rewrite of the dairy program that passed at the last minute in this bill. There was also both in the House and Senate bill some terrible language with a lifetime ban on anybody who's released from prison has served their time for murder, rape, or pedophilia. Um, and that passed in a non block package of 39 amendments the other night. Um, you know, so there's so much in it. There were also, you know, the, the House Republicans use this for deregulation of many, many things. Um, and there was like one that would have just basically eviscerated all rural development programs. So, in order to move back, to what the traffic will bear, 
Um, we don't really know what's going to happen. There is a Senate farm bill. It's the second year they've already done it. Um, and we've, this is the first time we've ever really seen this level of recriminations and falling apart. And I think the point is, is that democracy is not a spectator sport. There's some good things we've gotten over the last number of years. We want to go back more closely to the 2008 farm bill in many ways and not let important new programs that are, you know, that, that are the seeds of a new food and agriculture system die on the vine. And they've all not been funded this year. And so the people it hurts most is in this new food system, the veterans, the equity issues, not only the food, but for black farmers and Latino farmers, American Indian tribes, et cetera, et cetera. I like so that. <clears throat> Go ahead. We cannot give up. Sure. Uh, I like the metaphor there. In this case, uh, very apt. Uh, Rick, let me turn to you. Um, what are the stakes for you here? And uh, who, if anyone, do you think needs to get their act together right now? Well, it, it's another example of a dysfunctional government, and and we get the government that we deserve. And uh, we elected people who don't want to compromise. And uh, but it's it, the farm bill is very important to me. I've farmed for thirty years, and for the first twenty five years, it was tough. You know, two dollar corn, and um, so many times the only part that was on the positive side of the ledger was the the farm subsidy. Uh, on the 2008 one, the the insurance is very important to me. Uh, I don't know any other uh, industry or business that doesn't know their production and their pricing. And with agriculture, we're so dependent on weather, uh, government, you know, like uh, the Fed coming out and saying they were going to uh, increase interest rates, cause the market to tank. So many things outside of our control that uh, the the insurance part of it is very crucial. Uh, that and the other conservation programs, the, the rest of it, nobody wants uh, the direct payment. You know, that, that should have gone by the wayside a long time ago. Uh, but the uh, insurance part is very important to me. What do you make of criticisms that the farm bill basically lines the pockets of, uh, you know, rich corporations, big ag, the Monsantos of the world, instead of focusing on, uh, you know, what, what's going on with independent and family farms? I, I agree. I, I think that there should be tighter restrictions drawn uh, so that it does focus more on the smaller and especially the youth trying to come back into agriculture. Uh, we're less than 2% uh, uh, of the population are active farmers, and we need people back on the land instead of the farms getting bigger and bigger. So, yes, there should be restrictions on size, definitely. Okay, Justin, let's get back into the politics of this thing here. We haven't touched on the Republicans yet, but they have not shied away from making uh, some jokes of their own. Um, they're up in arms over the inclusion of big food assistance subsidies, as we discussed, and some conservatives have now set up to uh, debunk the so-called SNAP challenge. Uh, members of Congress trying to live off the same budget as Americans on food assistance. That's what uh, Snap Challenge is all about. Uh, but of course, you know, Snap Challenge is like perfect Twitter fodder. And so journalists on the right have started tweeting out their own results from playing this game. Um, I'm just going to show a picture really quickly of what uh, Ben Dominish bought um, doing his Snap Challenge. You got the Progresso soup, you got lots of hot dogs, lots of meat, um, baby carrots. I can't tell if they're organic. They might be uh, little tomatoes. Um, what do you make of the politics of the SNAP challenge, and uh, who has the better of the argument? I'm sorry. Well, first of all, I would like to make fun of Ben for buying uh, what looks to be cage-free eggs. It's not exactly the cheapest way to get your eggs for your morning breakfast. Uh, but perhaps like the most infamous is that there was, I believe it was on Twitchy, showed a bunch of Democratic congressmen complaining that they were having trouble with their SNAP challenge because they were purchasing food like daily and they were purchasing soft drinks and they were saying how expensive it was to buy uh, essentially pre-made food for their day. So it, the politics of it are, are quite silly. We have an unemployment that remains high. We have a lot of families that need SNAP and we should probably fix this. And but, uh, uh, Kelly, the, the, you know, the, the Twitter let, let... back and forth is absurd. Okay. So, uh, you know, Twitter is a place to go if you like absurdity. I do think there's sort of something here of like, how far can your dollar go? Um, if you're actually paying attention to how you spend it. But Kelly, I want to go to you. Uh, you know, food assistance is important to the people that you work with. Um, what is your sense of how lawmakers should think through sort of how much uh, subsidized food is too much? Or do you think that's the wrong question? No, I don't think that's the wrong question. I'm listening to you guys and, you know, I'm just 
getting a little bit of boiling blood because one of the things I'm thinking of is is listening to the jokes that are being made, you know, be, between our lawmakers. And there is no room for jokes in the veterans community. We are in a position where Agent Orange has become an issue for the veterans. The Vietnam veterans deny until they die. But now with the children of Vietnam veterans facing these same illnesses and disabilities, me with 32 of them that you can't even see, it's like, I don't have time to listen to your jokes and I don't have time to watch what you're going to go buy. And, you know, when you made the comment about the caged eggs, you know, it's like, come on, let's, let's just get, there is no room for joking around with people's lives. So, you know, when you talk about lining the corporation's pockets, well, yeah, the same corporation that is being lined is the same corporation that was the most deadly producer of Agent Orange. And it, this is a continuing circle. And I'm tired of seeing the veterans community, the disabled, the children of Vietnam veterans, and as our other guest referred to, the minorities always getting the other end of the stick, the crappy end. When Why is it always taking away from us? What's going to happen? See, what I see this is happening is a slippery slope walking down the road of, okay, well, next we'll, we'll take the Medicare benefits too. Okay, when, when you see uh, EBT uh, popping up at places like Taco Bell and Jack in the Box, um, how do you feel about the way food assistance is being delivered by those means? I think education is necessary. If you're going to have a farm bill and an agriculture bill, then use that funding to educate even minorities and lower socioeconomic status communities on where they can buy healthy foods. You know, at Taco Bell and McDonald's, they want to accept EBT on their machine. They're doing that because they want the proceeds. There's no difference in saying that we should use that funding to educate on how to eat healthy and, you know, how to eat without these same pesticides and herbicides being sprayed on our food, half of which was the chemical compound of Agent Orange. Okay, uh, Lorette, let me turn to you. Um, just help us understand how essential SNAP is. I mean, when you look at the acronym, it's supposed to be Supplemental Nutrition Assistance. Um, is it being used that way? Um, is this a system that's sort of uh, ripe for abuse in, in a certain respect? Or do you think that it's sort of doing enough help right now that maybe we shouldn't use our energies to pick away at it? Well, um, you know, if you listen to Representative James McGovern and Representative Rosa DeLauro and many of the Congressional Black Caucus and Hispanic Caucus members, they made very, very clear that the lowest error rate of all the programs in the, um, you, you know, in, in of the federal programs is the SNAP program. It's been so studied. I've been, this is my seventh farm bill, all of them since 1981, and we've gone after fraud and abuse in every single, in every single one of the debates. And um, so I don't know where else they could go. I think that Mr. Um, McGovern was saying, you know, why don't we put the same standards on the crop insurance program and on all these other programs? You know, and he also suggested perhaps we should do drug testing for all the recipients of these programs. And, and so SNAP does not have an error rate. It's a very important source of assistance to many working families who have no other income um, or also who work full time but do not have the income they need to cover their basic needs. So it's about people eating, and that's very important for the farmers, too, like the farmers we deal with who are the black farmers and the American Indian farmers in the South and in the West and the Latino farmers and the farm workers. Um, you know, we need a system that also helps them, and we were finally making progress. And, you know, in rural areas, um, you know, many, many um, people, um, you know, they – their incomes are low enough that SNAP is an important source. It's also sometimes what keeps alive some of the groceries, both in the urban and rural areas. Okay, uh, Rick, um, at least for commentators uh, inside the Beltway, they're saying at least one potential bright spot coming out of the mess here is a bipartisan push uh, of a different kind, which is for a hemp amendment. Uh, which actually was passed. I'm going to read from uh, Representative Earl Blumenauer here. He said, uh, the passage of my hemp amendment is indicative of something a bit different about this year's farm bill. A decades of bad policy have led to far more conversation and coordination among reformers than in the past. Um, how much does hemp reform matter to you and to other farmers uh, out there that you know? Well, uh, actually, not too much right here. But I, yeah, it's been ridiculous for us to import uh, commercial hemp and uh, 
and I mean, it grows down at the, the creek quite, you know, easily. And uh, it, it's a important fiber and, and we should be able to grow it in the U.S. It's just it's just a ridiculous law that needs to go away. Uh, OK, Justin, when you see but, uh, when you see some uh, some bipartisanship on hemp here, uh, when you think about the way this bill went down and how it's rankled people on both sides, uh, do you think there's really any hope here for maybe a new kind of bipartisanship um, that's actually arrayed against uh, business bloat and government bloat and uh, giant corporations and, and giant omnibus bills? I mean, they're eventually going to allow commercial hemp, and they're probably going to eventually allow uh, people to smoke weed too. So I don't. This is one of those where I think people eventually are saying this is a, a, a pretty silly prohibition, and we're getting there. So. Okay, but the but what about you know what about you, past... have, you have a liberty? Well, you have this is this, it's sort of a similar problem is that. One of the reasons that you now have a bipartisan effort to legalize commercial hemp is one of the same reasons you just saw a farm bill get defeated, which is that you have a, the libertarian wing of the Republican Party is very strong and quite ascendant. So that's the same wing that's going to say, sure, let's uh, let's legalize the, uh, commercial hemp. They're also going to be the ones who say, why are we paying money for SNAP and why are we subsidizing farms? So, so you think this is kind of going to be hemp and then stop, or do you think that this is uh, maybe the beginning of... Uh, representatives on both sides saying maybe we can make some new coalitions, maybe we can shake things up a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I, if We'll see if we have more Thomas Masseys in 2014 than if we do now. So, Okay, fair enough. Um, Lorette, there's uh, a, a yet another wrinkle here that I want to sure. touch on before we go uh, to make matters even more complicated for Congress. Um, observers are right now warning that failure on the Farm Bill uh, tees up another painful episode, perhaps when immigration finally comes up for a vote. Um, do you think out there um, that this ordeal is in danger of poisoning immigration reform? I think absolutely. I think absolutely it is. Um, you know, there was a vote um, just yesterday in the House Ju in the House Judiciary Committee that is setting up a new uh, guest worker program, and that's a part of the whole immigration package. And it's totally different than what's in the Senate bill. The agricultural employers really want a bill to help them get the workers they need. And what this would do, what the House is doing, is saying that anybody who's a farm worker, you know, there's some four million people who are essential to our food system, can come here and pick and pick our 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 vegetables, but then they have to go home every year and they can never be a full part of our society and they can continue to live in the exploitative conditions that they do. And so I think that if they can't get the farm bill passed, I don't know how they're going to go to the House of Representatives and be able to get an immigration bill or anything else. You know, the farm bill has never not passed. It's always been a bipartisan bill. And in all the years that I've been here, I have never seen it come off the rails this way. And I think that's because there's there's this very strong deregulatory agenda. It's like the same overall agenda that the Republicans in the House have on every single bill. And I think it's going to make it very difficult to get any business done whatsoever. Uh, Rick, what's your view on this? Uh, depending on the part of the country you're in, uh, ranchers, farmers, of course, have a long history of working with uh, Mexican, Latin American immigrants. Um, where do you come down on, uh, on the, the possibility of a comprehensive immigration reform? And are you concerned that based on what we see with, uh, with this food bill, uh, that Congress is not going to be able to, to get it done? Yeah, I, I think it's a big struggle. I'm not optimistic. I'm hopeful that they will get it done. Uh, on the SNAP issue, uh, coming from Red State, Nebraska, it's it's interesting that, you know, we're talking with the SNAP deal, it's the people with the least political clout. My neighbors who are Tea Party types are, you know, many of them are the most generous on a personal level. And yet, when it comes to our federal government helping uh, people, they just say, no way, you know, it's, and it's such a small part, you know, we have a huge bloated uh, military budget, and, and this is something that we, we can judge our own humanity with, and we, we can't, we can't do it. I, I just don't understand it. Okay, so what do you, what well, do you want, what do you want? Can I want interrupt to sorry, on so, you for that? Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead, sure, jump in. I, I just want to say, you know, we're being treated as observers of legislation in the United States. And once we elect someone, we sit back and watch. And what the American public needs to do as their own given civil rights is become active in legislation and use up 
platform like Popbox. You don't need to sit at your dining room tables anymore and write your state reps about a bill that you either agree or disagree with. You go on Popbox, you put it in right online, and your vote's cast. If we're going to sit here and allow bipartisan or non-bipartisan legislation to just kind of float away and we're not victims of it. We have a right and we have a voice to use as Americans on legislation that we either endorse or oppose. So I say use it instead of sitting back and complaining about it. Uh, okay. I mean, and I think that's a fair point, but you know, someone who might be a super cynical or super optimistic might say, uh, well, isn't it the job of our representatives to figure out all this complicated stuff for us? And, you know, can't we trust them? Does the system even work at all unless we can trust our representatives to go off, talk to the experts, and do the hard work that maybe, you know, we don't have the time or the expertise to do ourselves? Absolutely. But why not make the time? Why? I mean, we... Are they mind readers? Look, I am in no means defending, you know, our legislators, but unless they are getting our input, they're not going to read our minds. And to, for us to say, oh, well, they can do it, you know, that's so, so much of our opinion on everything that's either handed to us or taken away from us. We become victims. And you cannot be the victim of it. You have to be the advocate for it. So if you want the farm bill passed because it benefits you, then, you know, do your thing. But if you want your you know, SNAP benefits, then make sure you do your thing. Contact your state reps. It is as simple as two seconds on the computer now. We're in 2013. You know, you don't have to sit back and say, let that guy make a decision. Maybe that's why we've gotten to the point we are, because we are so lazy as Americans thinking, well, this person should do it for me. All right, Justin, I know that you're looking very comfortable out there. But I know you're not a lazy guy. I'm going to ask you to do your thing. Uh, be a prognosticator. This is clearly not the end of the story. Uh, what's going to happen with the food bill um, next week and, and going forward? Okay, right. So basically what you have, now, you have a lot of farm state Republicans who are very nervous right now, including the Republican from the 3rd District in Nebraska, who is, is going to have constituents asking him, why can't you pass a farm bill? That's the only thing you're sent to D.C. to do. Uh, it will pass. There are some things I would like to, I, regarding... Uh, the amendment to change the milk program. I hope they do. The milk program essentially has production caps that are reminiscent of a, of a communist style system, and that should go the way of uh, the Agricultural Adjustment Act of 1933. We can get rid of it. I hope we get rid of sugar subsidies. I don't know why we're essentially paying farmers in Florida and Texas and California money to make us unhealthy. But the, the, the darn thing will pass. It will. There's too much uh, legislative pressure on it, and eventually you're going to have a case where the thing goes through. Uh, I, what that exactly will look like, we're not entirely sure, but the Tea Party is one, it's perhaps its biggest uh, crowning achievement in quite a time, but the thing eventually will pass. Well, it's interesting to see this kind of bill that's got so much in it uh, go into the, the sausage grinder of politics right now um, as Republicans are, some of them are starting to question what the, uh, the establishment has been up to. And uh, now you've got Democrats who are uh, occasionally open to new partnerships uh, on hemp or other stuff. So uh, it'll be one to watch. Um, I'm sure we'll come up with a bill at some point. Um, there would be chaos if we didn't. Uh, but it's interesting to see what happens uh, when we have maybe an extra week to pause and think this stuff over. So, uh, Justin, Kelly, Lorette, and Rick, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank Remember, you. Remember, democracy is not a spectator sport. Agreed, um, as I say to someone in a monitor on the internet. Uh, green rooms are up there. Comments, please keep them coming. Keep your eyes here. There's a lot more to come on HuffPost Live.